Thanks, Dwayne. What we're going to hear today is that Mars is active. Now, whether or not it's because of geology or biology or both, don't, we don't know. Uh, Mars has natural gas, methane, which has been measured in the atmosphere. And what's more important is that it has been shown to vary in time and in space. So to get into this and to learn more about what the measurements are and what the implications are, let me introduce the panel. On my far right is Mike Mama, who's from the Center for Astrobiology at the Goddard Space Flight Center. To my immediate right is Guillermo Villanueva, who's from the Goddard Space Flight Center. On my immediate left is Sushil Latreya from the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. And at the end is Lisa Pratt from Indiana University of Bloomington. To start us off, if Mike, if you want to tell us about the methane measurements that have been made. Well, thank you, Michael. Uh, yes, I would. Uh, first, uh, let me state that uh, I think most of you have uh, read this paper in science, and, but I do think that for those who may be tuning in for the first time, uh, I would like to just mention uh, what, how the measurements were made uh, so that you have some feeling for that. Uh, we actually uh, use a technique called spectroscopy uh, by which uh, light is split into its individual wavelengths and then we can identify the fingerprint of individual molecules in this way. The first video shows light from the sun uh, on its way towards the, uh, could we roll that video, on its way towards the planet Mars, bouncing off the surface while passing through a cloud of uh, hypothetical gas, methane or water and so on then being dispersed into its individual colors through a spectrometer. In this case, uh, we, we exemplify this by a prism instrument. And finally, uh, giving us the opportunity to measure the spectrum in which appear certain uh, absence of light at specific positions, which we call uh, spectral lines. The manner in which we actually develop this for Mars is we place the entrance aperture of the spectrometer along the north-south uh, direction of the planet. Can I have the still, please? Uh, and here we show an image of Mars, and you can see these two vertical dark lines running from north to south on the planet. Light between those two lines enters the spectrometer, and then we take a spectrum at each little element along the uh, entrance aperture running from the top down to the bottom. So at any moment of time, we're actually acquiring depending on the size of Mars, uh, between 30 and 50 individual spectra of Mars uh, along that slit. Now, we do this at a cadence of 60 seconds. So every 60 seconds, we get another 50 spectra. And depending on how we bin those spectra, we can actually build a map of the planet uh, because the planet is rotating and it moves under the slit. Could we run the next video? In this video, we show the actual representation of methane uh, regions on the surface of Mars, and the very in intense red spots represent regions of active release. Uh, there are three such regions shown here. You'll hear more about that a bit later uh, in this uh, panel discussion. Uh, but the things I would like to mention to you uh, at this point are that uh, the, uh, uh, those three active regions release a general plume of methane that contains about 19,000 metric tons of methane, a very large amount. Uh, the release rate, though, is fairly small. It's only about one pound per second, or for those in the metric system, around 0.6 kilograms per second. Uh, and we can estimate the uh, lifetime of that methane in the atmosphere of Mars by, in fact, uh, looking at the same region later in the Mars year, and we find then that we do not see it. And this means that uh, if this event is solitary, the lifetime would be no longer than four years on Mars for this methane. If it's repeated each year, it could be no longer than one Earth year on Mars in lifetime. I should also state that uh, this is the first definitive detection of methane on Mars and the first definitive maps and identification of active regions of release. Uh, with that, let me go on to uh, identify, uh, discuss briefly regions that we think might be responsible for the origin of this methane. Could you run the next video? Here we show uh, an observer uh, flying down a valley of Mars and approaching a scarp face. We uh, schematically illustrate water reacting with hot rock 
and producing uh, methane gas, which then escapes through pores in the scarp face, a process called serpentinization. Or we could have evidence of biology below the surface of Mars, in which case the methane generated by various microbes could, in fact, accumulate and then escape through the scarp face or uh, through the surface, depending on exactly where the uh, material is originating. I think with that brief introduction as to what we've done and what we're reporting today, I want now to uh, introduce the core team members who have been vitally uh, involved in this work. Uh, my colleague from the uh, Iona College, New Rochelle, New York, uh, Professor uh, Robert Novak, and uh, my fellow panelist, uh, uh, Dr. Geronimo Villanueva, who will now tell you a bit more about the active release zones on Mars. Thank you, Geronimo. Mike. So the big question is, okay, we found methane. Where and when this methane is being released is critical for us to understand what is the origin of the gas. So one of the important things about our data set, as Mike was saying, is that we can measure not only methane, but also where it's coming from and when it's coming from. And Mars has seasons, like, uh, like our planet, and they repeat every two years. And let me roll this video now, and you can see northern summer on Mars. You can see this is what Mike was showing. We can de define four important regions, these four dots. I want to call your attention to the upper point there with this blue background. Indicates no methane up in this region. And what does it mean, importantly, for us? It does mean that uh, normally this region is full of water. All this ice is from the polar cap that you can see is, is very important on Mars. They're sublimating. They are releasing all these gases. So methane doesn't seem to be coming from there because we should see it. So if we zoom now, and let me show this still now. If we zoom on those regions that we do see the methane, you can see these three defined definitive and localized regions where methane is being released. You know, these are the names like continents on, the, on, on Mars, Terra Savai, Nili Fossa, and Sirtis Major. And one of the most important striking things about the discovery is that these, the regions that we, where we see methane are regions to know have a lot of rich history. And what type of history? For example, these regions show evidence that waters went flew over them. And this is very important because if this water is still available below the surface, some activity, geology, biology could be used in them. Another important aspect is to see when this methane has been, I mean, been produced. We know it's been released now, but when it has been produced? And one possibility is that this methane is stored in ISIS and we've seen this release, but it could also be this currently active. So one way to do that, we can distinguish these processes. We can measure isotopic ratios, and isotopic ratios will tell us the history of the methane gas and the origin definitively. And hopefully future missions like Mars Science Laboratory will be able to, come to proceed with these measurements. One thing we can say for certain, methane has been released very recently and because it has a very short lifetime in the atmosphere. And to go further in this topic, uh, Professor Sushi Latreda will discuss why methane has been destroyed and how fast it is. Thank you. Thank you, Mike, and thank you, Geronimo, for a very nice uh, summary of your observations. Uh, I found two things rather intriguing uh, from your observations. Uh, first, you show that there are active hotspots of methane on Mars where methane is being released from. And secondly, that the lifetime of methane, the residence time in the atmosphere, is relatively short. And the, both these things are connected to the way methane is produced on Mars and how it gets destroyed over time. Uh, there are three potential scenarios we can think of for the production of methane. Either uh, methane is delivered from our site, an external source, or it's being produced in the interior, an internal source. And in the internal source, as you pointed out in your earlier slides, there are two possibilities again. Either it's geology, in which case it's the reaction between water and rock that's producing the methane, or it's biology, in which case the microbes are producing methane. One thing I should mention is that methane could be produced today, but it doesn't have to be. We cannot be absolutely sure that this is not a relic of methane that was produced in the past, and that's being released. So it could very well be stored from the past, and it's being released. So let's roll the first video, and I'll talk a little more about this. So what you're seeing here is meteorites and comets uh, do strike Mars, and they produce less than 1% of the methane that we see on Mars today. On the other hand, 
the internal sources, the hydrologic 